Hello everyone and welcome to Strategy Gaming Dojo. Today we are going to do a live stream of Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. We are currently on December 10th, 1941. Uh, if you want to leave any comments in the chat, we can talk about whatever you want to talk about during the stream. Uh, given some of the feedback and just thinking about it myself, uh, I've changed a few things with the live stream for War in the Pacific here. Uh, this is a different kind of game. Uh, so, you know, it's not the prototypical kind of game that you live stream. And therefore, you know, a few tweaks are going to happen here and there. So what I'm going to do here, for one thing, we got the video quality fixed. But the way that this game works, you can't do chroma key. So I can't be this large Chester Nimitz uh, type floating head uh, on the screen, unfortunately. I, I'm very upset about that. I, I like when my big head is right out here in the middle of India. Uh, we can't do that. So instead, we're going to play it in the Windows mode, but I think you can see it pretty well. You know, I'm looking at the stream. Looks pretty good to me. Um, you know, let, let me know what you think. Uh, but I think it obviously looks much better than the darker quality. And again, I don't have that problem with any other games. I don't know if it's this game. Maybe there's just some setting. But evidently, we're going to do it this way where my head will be over here. Looks fine to me. Uh, not my head necessarily, but the game looks good, which is really all that matters. Um, and then the way I'm going to start structuring these is we're going to go over the last turn first. If anything interesting happened, there were any interesting battles or something you know that catches my attention, we'll go over that. Then we'll talk about maybe any new... I don't know. We'll talk about, you know, new units that show up. We'll talk about uh, things that are happening as far as things arrived someplace, things we need to give new orders to. We'll talk about all of that stuff. And then we'll have a little strategy session. So about 10 minutes where we're going to go through what we're trying to accomplish. Why are we giving these orders? You know, if new things show up, why are we sending them where we're sending them? Or if things have gone to their destinations, where are we going to send them next and why? Uh, a more of a discussion of the why we're doing the things that we're doing. Uh, and then finally, we'll resolve the turn. Uh, and that turn will resolve. We'll watch it together. And then as we uh, get to the end of that, I'll say, okay, we'll call it an episode, and when we come back the next time, then we'll do it all over again. And so that's how I'm going to structure them for now. You can tell me what you think about it. Maybe I'll change it, maybe I won't. But, uh, you know, always happy with the feedback. Uh, this channel is for you. Let's uh, play this game together. Um, yeah, heck, if you have any suggestions, you say, you know, what in the world are you doing with your carrier? You know, I've played this game a lot, but uh, no one is a true master of this game. Maybe there are a few, but uh, anyway, um, let's get started and let's go down and look at a few things that kind of caught my eye. As always, I made some um, notes here and I am going to bring up the chat over here. I saw uh, Bayard had shown up. That's great. Always good to see Bayard. He always has a lot of good content down in the comments. And so if you ever have any, you know, questions, Bayard covers a lot of stuff down in the, in the comments, and I always do appreciate that for sure. Um, give me just one second here. There we go. Uh, we've got uh, Aljo Blue from Portugal. Hey, of course, I, I love doing these, you know, it doesn't get better than getting to play a game and, you know, sharing it with a community like this. It's a very tight knit community, I think, for War in the Pacific, because it is such a hard game to learn, you know, and it takes a certain kind of personality to enjoy this type of game. I mean that as a compliment, uh, because I definitely enjoy the game. And so let's start off this time by talking about what happened last time. And as part of that, we can go up to the intelligence report uh, we can see the sorties that were run, okay? We had a little more luck in the air last time. 
Um, our air-to-air -air loss is a little less than the Japanese. Now they've got more planes. They've gotten more sorties up in the air so far in the campaign. Last turn, you know, it was within like 200 sorties. Uh, but they did lose 16 air-to-air. -air. That's always good early in the game if the Japanese are losing a little more air-to-air. -air. Now it does make sense, right? Because they're attacking. They're going to get flak coming up. And so as you can see, we destroyed three by flak uh, this latest turn. And uh, that's, you know, should continue as long as the Japanese stay on the attack and they're the ones coming to bomb our cities or ports or airfields and not the other way around. Uh, but, you know, air to air, if you can keep the Japanese losing more planes than you, that's good because one of the big advantages you're going to have is the Japanese have a very hard time replacing their good pilots. And uh, the more pilots uh, that you can take out, the harder it's going to be for the Japanese to have good experienced pilots. Meanwhile, you're training up a bunch of pilots to hopefully get very good. And at some point it flips and you're the one that has the most more experienced pilots, the better uh, dogfighters. And so anyway, early in the game, keeping it close or keeping the Japanese losing more, always a good thing. Uh, destroyed by flak, mentioned that. They had more operational losses. You know, we haven't really gone deeply into operational losses. Let's just say if you're flying things out to their max, uh, well, extended radius, let's call it extended. It's not max. That's for your base hopping, really. But if you're flying things out to the extended radius, you're going to take more operational losses. Uh, if, you do, if you do not... Um, have enough support, aviation support, you can take operational losses. Uh, so those are just some of the things to think about there. Uh, political points, we've now built up to 183. Uh, so we've got some to spend. Now you've seen as we move through the game that you're usually looking at, um, you know, a let's say a battalion, if you want to move that, it's going to be about 100, maybe 150 points. A division is up into the two or three hundreds. Uh, and so, you know, just kind of giving you a reference point, but 183 is good. Now, one thing about War in the Pacific, at least the way I play, is I don't change a lot of the admirals. Um, and so unlike War in the East, that we're also playing on the channel, where you're moving in a lot of different uh, commanders and you're spending a lot of political points that way, I find in War in the Pacific, you're spending your political points more to buy out commands to get units out into the Pacific. But we're going to talk more about that in the strategic section this time. Uh, as you see, we have a commanding lead. Let's just call it. We have we've won. Uh, of course, this will continue to narrow, that gap will narrow. You just don't want to see it narrow too quickly. Um, we control a lot of bases, of course, 590 to 246. Um, again, these are the points lost for aircraft. Now, they've lost more aircraft uh, than we have, but we've lost more points. Um, our aircraft can, you know, they're worth a little bit uh, different amounts. So, um, Wait a minute, that's not true. Uh, they're all worth one point. That's what I thought. 26 and 12, so that adds up to 38. That's why we've lost 38. 19, 23, 35. Yep, it's one point apiece. Sorry about that. Um, we've lost some army points. Now, we have not inf really inflicted hardly any casualties uh, on Japanese ground forces. Um, hopefully that will come, especially in China. Uh, I'm going to spend one of these episodes really deep diving into China. Uh, for now, we're kind of moving our ground units around where they need to be or where we want them to be, and we're going to sort of turtle down. Uh, we're going to be playing defense in China, especially at the start. We've lost seven ships, but I can report good news. So we've lost seven ships for 344. Okay. Um, I can report good news. The Prince of Wales, thank you, uh, by the way, uh, Bayard. Bayard said, hey, get the Prince of Wales out of there get get him out of there and uh he was right about that as a matter of fact let's just go look for the prince of wales here uh there you are and the repulse they're both in task force 408 there they are they're about to get through the strait uh hopefully you know this next turn as they come down here they will be out of danger now right now i have them go into the cocos uh so that will not happen next turn almost it'll, they'll get close uh, but then it'll happen the turn after that then we'll kind of decide I've got them 
um, their home port as Darwin. I'm actually going to set their home port as the Cocos here. Uh, not because, and we'll make sure they do not refuel. Uh, not because uh, I want them to stay at the Cocos necessarily, but I'm going to decide whether to send them to Darwin or to send them up here to, uh, if I can find it, to Colombo. Uh, and so we're going to be, you know, deciding that a couple of turns from now. So last time, what really happened? Well, we obviously had a bunch of ships start moving around and in these early turns you have already given the orders you've already come up with your quote unquote strategy you've given orders and in turns two three even four things are uh, moving around they're moving around they're going to their initial destinations and i had some discussions with some people uh in the comments and otherwise talking about well now that we don't have the spreadsheet to rely on, what do I do now? Or how do you think about the game? Um, and it's a good question, right? We've, you know, so far, we've been going through a spreadsheet and Cole has told us exactly what we should do. And then it makes sense. You see it and you say, oh yeah, I should, you know, build up this base or it, or this should be going there. That makes sense to me. But then once that has ta is been taken away from you, then you have to start making the decisions about what you want to do. And it's very easy to get overwhelmed with this game. Um, yeah, Stanley, it's, well, Stanley's got it right. You got to have a notebook, right? You got to get a notebook or you got to have Word up. Uh, I always just take notes. I've got one of these, you know, yellow, one of these little yellow uh, legal pads. Here we go. Uh, and, and I write everything down in one of these legal pads and I'll go through two or three pages of each churn. Um, but I want to, and I'm going to get into it later here, exactly how I approach each turn. So we've resolved the last turn. I always go up to the intelligence report. Okay. Uh, you can look, you know, aircraft losses. You can go and look at your top pilots. Let's go look at our pilots. We got a, a few guys, uh, with a, with two kills all right uh they will soon be getting to ace status i hope you got to have five kills to be an ace uh in real life and uh, they are progressing there but i always go to this information or intelligence report and look this over i will also look at the withdrawal schedule and the reinforcement schedule so i like to see what's coming in uh, you know we'll have seattle san francisco eastern us san diego we have some planes coming in Okay, uh, we are going to have withdrawals, but not until nine days. We can give this another couple of times. Then we'll go to Quantan and we'll withdraw this unit out so we don't lose any uh, political points. You can do this early and you can even gain some. And maybe we'll look at that. Um, you know, the replacement pool, pilot replacements, we're not really to the point where we have to worry about that yet ship sunk you know again i talked about this at the end of last episode the cargo ships 1.2 points 1.2 points 1 point um we will absolutely take that you know you never want to lose any ships that being said one or two point losses are not going to hurt you especially early here in the game when they're looking at the philippines the japanese are running big bombing runs into the philippines they're running big bombing runs into singapore it looks like we got the things out of singapore we wanted to okay um ground reinforcement schedule you always want to take a look at that see what's coming up we've got nothing for a few turns here um and again, you know, you just look through this, you take the information that it gives you. Uh, we've got some withdrawals coming out uh, at some point here. And, you know, I always look through the information or the intelligence, I keep saying information, the intelligence screen. Um, yeah, Stanley, the, the, I think the combat tracker is helpful. I don't use it anymore. And the reason I don't is because I didn't use it when I first started playing the game. And I'm just used to doing things a certain way. Uh, but I know that a lot of people find it very helpful. It'll track your supplies, your fuel. You can sort it. You can uh, filter it, I believe. You know, And so I just don't use it. But that doesn't make it right or wrong. I, I think that a lot of people find it very helpful. Um, 
you know, you can read over, it'll tell you, as Bayard's saying, it, it will tell you uh, what you need to know as far as uh, how it works. You know, it, it's been well developed over the years. I just don't use it. I have my own system. Um, but, you know, believe me, I, I know a lot of people do find it very useful. So I look at the intelligence report. Uh, sometimes, of course, I will come over here to the grand map. And we'll go into this more as uh, I get to the strategic section. Uh, so I will look at the grand map, you know, look. Sometimes I look to see if there are any green dots out here in what I call the dead zone uh, that should not be out here, okay? Uh, you can look at your convoys. Are they progressing? Um, you know, so I take a peek. Why not? Uh, take every bit of information they'll give you. Uh, many times I'll go through the combat reports if I missed something or I felt like I missed something, especially in the air war to see what kind of altitudes the Japanese are coming in at. I'll look at that. Or maybe, you know, I got a little busy or I wasn't paying attention when one of the combat reports uh, resolved itself and didn't see it. Um, operations, of course, always. I, I look through every single thing here. Uh, you just never know what nugget of information that you'll get. Um, you know, you may get a sighting of where something is or where the Japanese are moving or something that has arrived. Uh, for instance, this turn, we had f quite a few destroyers that got repaired. Uh, you may remember we put the Voyager in uh, to Sydney into uh, the dock there into the repair uh, shipyard and now it is ready to go and so I went and gave that orders I think on the spreadsheet it was uh, it's supposed to merge with the tankers that are running out to Nomaya uh, so I've given it that order to do that um, you know you had the stronghold here that's in Singapore we're gonna want to get the stronghold out I have not done that yet there were a couple things I kept for this turn to do before we resolve it so we'll need to go to Singapore and get the stronghold and the Jupiter which have both been repaired now um, yeah Bayard I think because of the way I had to uh, deal with the video issue the cursor is offset just a little bit and so i will definitely keep that in mind the cursor seems to be running about three or four clicks to the right of where i have it on my screen which uh, hey that's fun right so I'll, I'll try to figure that out and keep that straight in my brain of course like anything else with a computer screen with the computer i'll probably be doing it backwards so it'll be eight clicks to the right instead of four uh, but I'll try to keep that in mind that I need to be moving this thing further to the left on my screen anyway. Um, but again, you can see so much information here. Always go over your operational report, uh, see you know what's happened here, what's been cited, uh, what's shown up, what's been repaired. Uh, just a wealth of information there. Um, and then again, your signal intelligence. Uh, always fun to read over this. You may get some good information, you may get some bad information, uh, but it, it's always fun to look at. So after I do that, okay, I do what I call my spreadsheet run. And as I said last time, I keep my own spreadsheet. And that's why I don't use uh, the tracker, is because I'm just used to doing my own spreadsheet. And what I do is I take I take Cole's spreadsheet. I get rid of all of the Soviet stuff, okay? You can also get rid of all of the bases, the, uh, you know, resources, uh, refineries, all of, all of the production stuff um, that's on the spreadsheet. I, you could get rid of that. I do not. I just label that all in red, okay? So I put anything that is stationary or you're not expecting to move or you don't need to move for the entire game i put that in red on my spreadsheet then i take any unit that i'm probably not going to move but that you could potentially buy out for the right amount of political points i put that in orange then anything that's training Anything that I'll eventually use, but it's now currently in training and I'm not using it uh, currently, I put that in yellow, okay? 
Uh, then usually I put task forces that are on the move to their destination in blue. I just picked blue. There's not a good reason for that. And then anything that I definitely want to be checking the next turn or an upcoming turn. So anything in Cole's spreadsheet that, that had your uh, original orders, and then in red it said, hey, next we need to move this uh, somewhere else, or next you want to go lay mine somewhere with this, or you know, once this task force gets here, wait two turns and then send it someplace else. Anything like that I put in green. And that's how I do my spreadsheet. Now, because this is a live stream, I can't show you the spreadsheet. It, it just, I'm not going to play with the layering like that because I don't want to go dark screen here. Uh, but the next time I just straight record an episode, which will probably be tomorrow, I will show you my spreadsheet and how I do it. And uh, maybe that'll be helpful for you. Okay. And so what I would do is do my spreadsheet run. So I go through everything that's in green, in blue, and in yellow. And I see if there's anything I need to do additional with that. At this point, there's about 1,000, 1,200 things that you have to run through in what I call my spreadsheet run. But once you get used to that, you can do that in about 20 or 25 minutes, usually. Or, you know, there might be some uh, special circumstances. Uh, but for instance, in my spreadsheet run, I would have that I need to go to Singapore this time. 